Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. This uh, season is slipping away from us quickly. It'll be Advent before you know it. Oh, <laughs> well, you don't believe that? What? Time flies when you're having fun, right? All right. A few announcements I want to draw to your attention. One of those is today's Food Bag Sunday, and I see several people that brought in the wagons full. Uh, if you forgot the food, you're certainly welcome to uh, put some money in the offering plate. Just make sure it's marked for the food bank. Uh, some of you have received an email about your contributions to St. Benedict's for the early part of the year. Uh, we're all suspicious these days of scams because it's asking you to e-sign a document verifying your contributions and to return it. This is from our auditor. It's authentic, uh, and so we would ask you to respond to that so she can complete her work. Uh, I apologize that I didn't get the word out before they went out uh, that this was going to happen. I didn't know what format she was going to use. But it is authentic, it is real, and it's helpful to uh, help her complete our financial audit for the parish. And so if you receive one of those, please respond to that uh, and so she can finish her work. Uh, we're collecting calendars for the Mission to Seafarers. Uh, there's a box in its usual place on the counter next to the parish hall doors. And so as you gather up 20, 21 calendars that you don't have wall space to use, uh, drop them in that box and uh, They'll be taken by Ralph Pro Provencal to the Mission to Seafarers. Blessing of the animals on October the 4th. We're going to have the, two, the traditional service that we've had at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And so bring your favorite critter and show up uh, for the short service of, uh, of readings and prayers and acknowledging and giving thanks for the role of animals in our lives. Also, to remind you, if you're interested in helping with hurricane and wildfire relief, the Episcopal Relief and Development is a good way to do that. The information is in the bulletin on, the on how you can do it directly, or you can make a contribution through, uh, through our parish by marking your contribution uh, for the ERD. You can describe exactly what you want to donate it to if you choose to do that, uh, particularly on their website. Any announcements from you? Everything's good. Sky's clear. Sun shines every once in a while. Uh, we keep in our prayers the people that are affected by the wildfires and by the hurricanes in the Gulf Coast. We'll have a little bit of quiet, ring the bell, and begin our worship. Again, welcome. It's nice to see you this morning. Receive our prayer. 
For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gathered on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it is the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. <clears throat> then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And then Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Let us say together, Canticle, O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are made in the universe. So that's the human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O king of all ages, who can fail to be the one on the Lord's world, and sing the praises of your name. For you are the only God of the Lord. All nations will come here and fall down before the Lord. You are the judge. to the church in Philippi. To me, living in Christ, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh,
flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For God has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last work only one hour, and you've made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We continue the saga of the Israelites in the desert, making their way to the Promised Land and trying to learn how to interact and to be a community of faith following God's instructions uh, so that they are prepared when they get to the place where God is sending them uh, to establish a great nation in God's name so they can show God to the rest of the world. And they continue, like all human beings, to have problems with that. They're out in the wilderness and the food is not very abundant, so they're complaining. God, why did you bring us out here to kill us? Why couldn't we just die while we were fat, dumb, and happy? That's my interpretation, of course. <laughs> and so 
they rail against God. What are we going to do? You brought us out here. We're going to die of hunger. And God says, no, you're not. I'll take care of you. And of course, we have the bit about Moses uh, complaining to Moses and Aaron. And Moses and Aaron remind them that they're not complaining against them. They're complaining against God. So to listen to what's going on and to follow God's example and God's word. And it seems there's some sense that God gives them this kind of complicated thing to do. Uh, to test them and make sure they can follow instructions. Because this manna, that's what we call it, and in the older translations of the Bible, uh, that's what it's called. Uh, it basically means, what is it? Because they didn't know what it was. But the bread provided had to be treated in a certain way. You had to gather for the day. And you couldn't keep it till the next day, except on the Sabbath. And if you didn't follow those instructions, anything you tried to keep went bad. It brought it. And there's a description in here if you want to read the whole story uh, of it growing worms and all sorts of stuff. But the reality is you take what you need for today and be satisfied with it. With a trust, following God's example and God's faithfulness, that the next day there will be something there to feed you as well. And from what we can tell from the story, that continues until they approach the promised land. And there's even in the passage of the story... It says, and the manna ended that day when they became into a place where they were sufficient to be able to, to feed and provide for themselves. This story, too, in this particular part of the book of Exodus is a combination, again, of the two sources. They call the J and the P sources. Uh, and so the story seems to be told two times, but it's really told from different perspectives. And as a reminder of that in Old Testament history, throughout the Old Testament, uh, there's what they call a priestly version of what happened. And though that version typically seems to be very organized and systematic. And then there's the other description, what's called a J source. Uh, that's kind of the old story Grandpa would tell around the fires, the, the campfire at night. And so we get those thrown in together, and it sounds like they're, they're repeating themselves. But the people that put Holy Scriptures together did that on purpose to get the perspectives of different people. So when you read that, don't get turned off by the fact, wait a minute, I thought I just read that story. Uh, you did, but it was from a different eyewitness, if you could put it in that way. But the key to it is, I think underneath it all, is that God provides what we need. Now we have in our theology as Christians very much that strong sense that God provides what we need and that God is ever faithful. And these stories and other stories from the Old Testament, from the epistles, and from the Gospels remind us of God's faithfulness. And we're reminded through the life and the history of the church that what God promises happens in some way, not necessarily the way we would like it to happen, but if God makes a promise, God is faithful. And on that we can depend, and it includes things like the manna provided for the Israelites in the desert, and it includes eternal life for us who follow God through Jesus the cross. That if God is faithful in the manna in the desert, God can easily be faithful in providing eternal life for those who follow God and do their best to live in God's love and God's grace and to share that with other people. And that's where we fall. Many thousands of generations later, when we're asked once again to rely on the manna that God gives us, to rely on the things that God provides for our needs as human beings, what God provides for our needs as ministers and apostles of the gospel, and to accept and provide and use the resources God gives us as a Christian community. And God's faithfulness is key to that. When we think about how we live together, of course, Paul writing to the church in Philippi again reminds us of the relationships of people in the, in the community of faith. And he talks about the idea, well, am I better off to stay here and work for Christ or am I better off to go ahead and die and to be with Christ for eternity? And for us as Christians, perhaps that's a question uh, that we might ask ourselves, particularly as we approach our own deaths. Jesus' parable about the landowner hiring workers in the vineyard 
is a difficult one in our, in our day and time because we expect that you get compensation for the effort that you put in. And this kind of turns that story around and says you get compensated for what you're promised. And that the amount of effort that you put in is not necessarily related to your compensation. That if you have done what you have been asked to do, that you get the compensation for that. And I think for us as Christians, this parable leads us into the idea that when we come to realize that Jesus is offering us an opportunity to live in relationship with God and we accept that responsibility, when we accept that relationship, it doesn't matter if we accept that from our earliest age when we don't remember it or if we accept it on our deathbed, the result is the same. The promise that God has made is not contingent on what we have done or the length of time we've had to do it. And so the lesson I think underneath this for the manna and for this is to take what God provides and use it for the time that God provided. The manna was food for the day. Take it and eat it and be healthy and happy. And the things that God provides for us as individuals and as a community, when those things are provided, use them for the things that God provides them for in our life together, in our ministry together. And don't worry about tomorrow. If we are faithful, tomorrow takes care of itself. That's not something that financial managers in the life of the church like to hear. But it's the reality of a responsible relationship with God is that God provides. And we as individuals and as a community, we have everything that we need, everything, to follow Christ, to live and proclaim the gospel, as individuals and as a community. And when this community or any other Christian community decides that God is calling us to do something, we have the power and the ability and the resources to make that happen. But sometimes we need to be reminded of who we are and where we are and why we're here, what our purpose is, and what is our source. What is our source of life itself? What is our source of our talents our abilities, our opportunities, our resources. And we give credit to God for all of those things. And we have the basis for that from Holy Scripture. We have the basis of that from the life and history of the church. We have the basis for that from other people that we encountered who have followed Christ and done their best to live and proclaim the gospel. We have that example in our relationships as we live together and reach out to touch people's lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we live on God's manna. We live on the manna. Every once in a while we get a feast of the doves. But day to day, day to day we live on the manna of God providing for us what we need. And for us that's what we need for the day. Tomorrow takes care of itself through faith in God and through God's faithfulness to us and God's promise. We reach out. We reach out sometimes into the unknown, into the darkness, and we wonder, is God really with us? I believe in next week's readings we get that question asked, is God really here at all? And hopefully we find when we think about our personal relationship with God when we gather together for worship and fellowship and sacrament that we ask that question and we find yes. Yes, in fact, God is with us. God is in our midst. And because of that, we have power and ability and promise that we not otherwise had. Because we remember we fall back and I like to use our mission statement. That we are the hands of Christ in the heart of Lacey. Because I think that says who we are and what we are. And what God is calling us to be. In whatever way we discover that we might do that. Whatever the manna is for today.
Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to just living in the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's people throughout the world, for bishops, Justin, Michael, Gray, Ernie, for this congregation, for Ed, John, Robert, Kathy, and Tony, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. <clears throat>
I ask your thanksgivings for our ministries, especially our church librarian, Anne, for all of our children, and our clerk to the vestry, Spencer. I ask your prayers for children who are abused, neglected, or hungry, especially those incarcerated in immigration detention centers and victims of human trafficking. I invite your prayers for the victims of the wildfires in our state and elsewhere, and especially for those on the front lines fighting the fires and the victims of the hurricanes in the Gulf Coast and the rescue workers. I ask you to add your own prayers and thanksgivings. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for St. Benedict's Parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Peace. 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 Once again, it's nice to see you out today. Uh, do we have goodies for after church? We do. We do? Okay. I should have I should know that. But I always ask, but I sometimes don't get the word. And so we will not have a formal coffee hour, but you are welcome to respect safe distancing and hang out for a while uh, and have a snack and a cup of coffee and a visit. So we offer that to you if you're so inclined. Do we have birthdays, anniversaries, other celebrations? Yes, ma'am. I have a new great granddaughter born on Monday. All right. Her name is Clara. Clara, okay, well, congratulations to the family. I have uh, two great grandsons who just celebrated birthdays on the same day, four years apart. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Shall we offer the birthday prayer for this new birth and for the birth? Yes. Um, yesterday was um, like, um, Kalina's birthday. Kalina's birthday was yesterday. Is that right? Okay. Well, let's say the birthday prayer for these birthdays and for this new birth. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as we celebrate the anniversary of their birth. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
they stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
eternal God, Heavenly Father. You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Father bless you. God the Son heal you. God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you to that heavenly country where God lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I apologize that I did not explain about the distribution of communion. This is a new requirement from the bishop's office that I can no longer hand you the bread. It has to be laid out on a cloth six inches apart, and you have to pick up your own piece of bread uh, and consume it. Uh, this is... Uh, I can't explain it. It's a guideline from our bishop. So <laughs> Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, God.